What is up everyone? Back again. Well, guess what we're doing today? I figured today would be a great day to kind of show you guys the 2020 Z520. Kind of rhymes right there. Everybody's been asking for it. It has been crazy times. I have to uh, apologize for that. But that being said, she's ready. She's ready. Cannot wait to get her out there on the tournament trail if it's ever going to start this year. But nevertheless, guys, I want to show you the brand new boat, give you a little walk around. And I need, don't get off this video, I need your opinion. I need your advice on some real big things with this boat. So that being said, come with me. Let's go. There she is. Beautiful, isn't she? My, this is my 2020 Z520. Oh, yeah. So, guys, check this out. Come here. Let me show you. First of all, same color scheme, right? We've done the same that we did last year. I like this. I actually designed this color scheme. I designed this years ago. Eagle Claw and Live Target are my two main sponsors on this boat. So I want a huge thank you to those guys for supporting me for all these years. I love the colors. I love the badging. I love the lures and all that good stuff. So that's a big thank you for that. We've got pretty much every, everybody's on board again for 2020, which is awesome. And let me show you the brand new 2020 250 HO. It's a little different. Come here and tell you about it. Look at this beautiful baby right here. That's a 250, guys. 250 HO, which is high output Evan Rue. This is the 2020, and they've actually changed some things in here. And I, and I don't know all the things. I wish I could say, hey, they did this, they did that. But they did some stuff under here that is making it even better on fuel economy. They say 15% better than the competition in fuel economy. Uh, it's better on the burn on oil. It's uh, more torque, more, I think it's more speed. I mean, I'm going, this thing's just peppy. I like the way it sounds. They've done some great things with this right here. Uh, BRP, Evan Rude, big thumbs up, you guys. I've been with Evan Rude my entire career, so cannot be more proud of running these motors. Uh, guys, I'm honestly, you need to check them out. I know there's choices out there. I know people, it's kind of like the Ford Chevy thing. I know everybody's got their, their favorites, right? But give them an honest shot. Just check out, you know, check out their website, go to a dealer, talk about the differences and talk about, you know, the cost of ownership, things like that. It's very, very important. So thank you, huge thank you to them. And before we get too far into this video, guys, I want to say one thing real quick. So I know there's some of y'all are getting ready to start typing in, oh, this is another infomercial, or hey, he's just hawking all of his sponsor stuff. Let me tell you something, guys. First of all, I'm very proud and honored to be supported by these companies, okay? Number one, that allows me to get out here on the road and shoot these videos and compete. So thank you very much, Evan Rude and Live Target and Afco, everybody that supports me. Number two, guys, these are the companies that are supporting our industry. They're supporting our fisheries. They're the ones that are making tournaments available. They're the ones pouring into our industry and allowing us to make a living and you enjoy the sport of fishing as well. So anyways, I just wanted to say that, yes, they are sponsors of mine and I'm very, very proud to have them. And again, without these great sponsors, I would not be able to do what I'm doing today. And these sponsors are the same one I've had for many, many, many years. The reason I'm running these products is because they work and I believe in them and they make a huge difference in my success in these tournaments. So for all of y'all who are getting ready to type all that, take that. So thank you Evernude and every one of my sponsors and thank you guys for understanding that. I hope you do. So that being said, let's jump back in to the boat and talk a few more little things here on the outside. Then I need your advice on some stuff on the inside. All right, so Bob's hydraulic jack plate. I've got a six inch action jack on the back of this boat. I like the action jack because the pump is included inside of the actual jack plate itself, which is nice. It frees up the compartment in here, and that is a really good thing. Number two reason I like the Bob's jack plate, it's responsive and it's fast. When I say fast, I think it's twice as fast as any, anything else out there on the market. And that is important because I don't know how many times I'm fishing and I'm like, oh crap, I need to get the jack plate up now. And I'm hitting that button. This is getting up faster. A slow one that gets stuck and doesn't hardly go up when you're under power, that's a problem. So thank you, Bob's. That's what's on the back of this one. I've got this one powder coated black as well. It's a little dirty right now. It's a little dusty, but it's powder coated black. And a lot of people were asking me this year, you know, how do you like the powder coat? And, and so far, so good. I haven't had any problems with it at all. The powder coating process that Bob's is doing on these plates is really superb. I haven't seen anybody have any chipping issues. None of my paint have fallen off in the last couple of years that I've gotten powder coated. So it's been really, really good. So yeah, Bob's and oh, power pole. Look at, look right here. I almost forgot. Power pole blades right here. Now I did do something different and I'm not sure if I'm going to switch. I may switch back, but it's the power pole blades. This is an eight footer. I've always had tens and I'm trying the eights this year just to see how I like it. They're compact. I can get in my garage really well. Again, these are black and blades come in several different colors. So you can, you can kind of trick them out. And I've even seen some guys get them custom painted. Now I haven't no need for that right now, but I've seen a couple guys custom paint them, which is a pretty cool little way to trick out your boat 
and uh, and they're nice. These are the reason these blades uh, are the top of the line ones is that they're a little bit lighter. They've got all these holes drilled in them, so there's less weight here on the back, and they're just as rigid and just as fast. So with that Monster 2.0 pump, it's quick. You know, you've got everything on your apps. It's it's yeah, good stuff. Let's jump up in and see what's up in the boat. All right, so back here in the back, I've got the brand new PowerPole Charge charger. It's the charge charger, power pole. I don't even, I don't know, but it's pretty sweet, guys. Okay, number one, it charges my lithium batteries. I've got the lithium pros back here in the back for my trolling motor. I've got lithium pros for my cranking battery as well. It charges all that system. It monitors my system. It's it's really cool. So new technology in the charger category is pretty cool. These guys knocked it out of the park. Power pole charge, awesome. And lithium pros, guys. Let me tell you something. I've been running lithium five years now love it okay it charges fast all day power lightweight i'm getting more speed in my boat i can get up on plane quicker just lots of advantages uh to having lithium pros in my boat there's a lot of lithium batteries out there on the market now that technology and it's starting to take off lithium pros is the one that started this whole thing so be sure to check those guys out if you're wanting to get into the lithium battery market all right so here on my console i've always had the dual mounts i've got dual here side by side and i have dual in the front and uh, the mount that I've been using the last probably three years is the Boat Logics mount. They're made in Tennessee. They're really, really sturdy, really strong. They don't move. I really like this mount. And, and it's important to have a good mount. If you're going to do these accessory type mounts, it's so important to have one that is right and built right because when you're in big water, you don't want a bolt to break. You don't want these things to come out. You, I mean, there's all kinds of issues. And if you're in a tournament and you're running down the lake and crashing through waves and trying to make it back in in time, and this thing starts coming apart, you got a problem, a big problem. So Boat Logic mounts are awesome. The two units here are the 8612s, which you've seen a lot of the other guys run the big 12 inch Echo Maps this year, but I'm running the 8612s this year. And uh, they're nice units here. It's got, you know, the pan optics, of course, the down view, the side view, all the different things. And, and I like it, these are 12 inch units. They're a little bit more compact, even though they're still a 12 inch screen, a little bit compact on the, on the body and uh, it's nice so i've got the tilt steering wheel this year which is cool I can tilt that around get it where i want it and then i have my dual switches and i've always liked this and this is a, a little tip for you this is the pro tri trim switch right here and if i go up or down that's the jack plate that's the hydraulic jack plate the reason i put it on the left side this is a little tip for you the reason i put the hydraulic on the left is because when i'm trying to like jump up on plane in super shallow water i'll use the trim on the engine trim this all the way down, jack plate all the way up, gas it, start coming down with the plate and trimming up with the motor at the same time. So I can jump up out of the hole, get the engine up, get the jack plate, start to get it back down so it's staying hooked up on the water. I can kind of feather it that way. If your jack plate was on this right side, then you're out of whack. You're trying to steer and do the jack plate, not a good idea. So if you're gonna rig one up on the dual trims like I have, Put them on the left side for your jack plate. Trim on the right, jack plate on the left, and then you can, of course, use it right here. Got my power pole switch right here on the dash. I'm trying to think where to put this. I might actually put this in a little different spot, or actually get, actually, what's I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get like probably two more and put one over here on this side of the boat, and then another one. Well, I'll have the floor switches, which I don't have yet, but I'll put those in the front. So that way, no matter where I'm at in the boat, I can hit the power poles down or up, depending on what I want to do. So that being said, that's it. Look, guys, I, I've been running Ranger my whole career, and uh, and I love the boats for lots of reasons. The fishability, the stability. I love these seats. I mean, it's just, it's just a nice running boat. It's like a Cadillac, but yet it drives like a Corvette or like a little Ferrari. I mean, this thing's quick. It's responsive. It's a good boat. So now getting to the part where I need your help and need your advice. I want to try to figure out how to organize my boat this year. I've done it a certain way for years. And the way I'm thinking is like, look, it's a new, it's a new tour. It's kind of a new, a whole new era. So let me, I, I'm thinking, so let me show you what I'm thinking and you drop some comments below and help me out here. And I'm literally going to do what the best ideas are. So here, come on, come on. All right, so the question is how to organize my rod lockers. Now, right now, I have this. Let me open all these up, okay? So here's all my compartments, and they're not really organized quite yet because, this again, I wanted to get your advice. There is all my storage in this boat, right? And so I've got all my lure lock boxes, of course, and I, I, that's where I need to figure out. So I've seen some people on the Rangers use the center box right here for all their tackle, okay? And I've seen like boxes all the way in this whole center part. And that's a good idea. And I've seen some people also 
just stack them over on this side and this side. And that's kind of what I've been doing the last couple of years. I've been putting them here on this, right here in front of the console and that compartment there and using this still for rod storage because it actually has the rod tubes inside this locker. So I would slide my rods in and had all my extra rods because as you've seen, I have a lot of rods. I, I kind of, you know, I don't know if I'm confused or I just want to be prepared, but I'll have 20 rods rigged up ready to go on game day. So I kind of need some extra stuff, but I do have a solution for that possibly. So here's what I want you to drop a comment below. Option one, should I make this all storage and then just do away with the rod locker here? And then that way I can put, you know, jackets and stuff over there, whatever, and just use this for a nice organizing area? Or should I just keep the boxes on this side, stack them up properly here, stack them up properly there, and do it like this? Now, I have all my Guggen baits all here on the side right now. This because we've been fishing a little bit here on Okeechobee. And they are eating the bandito bug, guys. They are literally, I literally ran out of the one color. And so, Rob, if you're watching the video, please send me some black and blue bandito bugs, okay? Like, for real? Because you said you were going to, and then never happened. And then I know you've been busy, and it's been corona time, but I need some bandito bugs. Oh, and some saucy swimmers. Okay, anyways, I'm getting a little sidetracked, sorry. I do need saucy swimmers, though, for real. So that's, that's my question. So should I put it all in here and do that? Now, Now here's a, here's a suggestion that I need some help with, too. And I don't know if any of y'all have done this. But see this rod organizer right here? These are the tubes that the rods go in. These are, these are the rods go right in here. And there's, I don't know, eight or nine tubes. Yeah, three, six, yeah, there's 10 tubes. And you can put multiple rods in the tube. But I'm thinking about taking that out. Taking that all the way out so it's literally just a big V. And then putting all my rods in rod socks and then they would literally just lay on each other. And I think I can put more in there. So if I did that, then I think that would solve the solution of having rods on this side. So I could put all my rods over here no matter what and rod socks, which is what I need to start doing anyways. And then put all my tackle here in the middle and then use this right side for soft baits and day-to-day -day stuff, you know? Because I always like to have a little tub. And what I did last year is I had a little tub, two tubs actually right here, uh, that were low enough I could put the rods on them that had like what I call the day-to-day -day stuff. So if I was, you know, at a certain lake and I know I'm going through, you know, these certain lures, I need these extra ones and these kind of ready to go, I would put them in those little tubs. So that way I didn't have to dig around in my bulk bags and look for stuff. I just kind of had it all ready to go. That was my prep day. And so everything would lay, lay out in that little box. And that was nice, because game day, I'm sitting there like, run, I need another worm, I need another bandito bug, boom, there it is, got it ready to go. So that's what I'm thinking about doing, guys, is honestly taking that out, putting all my rods in there, putting tackle boxes, the lure locks, right in here, you know, different sizes lure locks, which I don't know if you've seen these, but check this out. I'm sure you all have, but it's got the tack logic in it, okay? This is the sticky stuff that's in this box that really, really holds everything in place really well. And so I started using a lot of these smaller boxes because, I mean, like, look how many jerk baits I have in there. That's a lot of jerk baits. And that's the tack logic box, and nothing's moving around too bad. Now, if I dump this over, a few would fall out just because they're not all touching the, the tack logic, but. They're not rattling around nonstop, and that destroys your baits, guys, I'm telling you. So I use these medium-sized boxes a lot, and then in my truck, in my deck system, I usually have the bigger boxes in there, and then I can kind of swap back and forth, cut down on weight in the boat, because believe it or not, if you can cut the weight down in the boat, you can gain, you know, if you do it right, you can gain two miles an hour out of this boat just by loading it the proper way not putting too much heavy stuff in the front so i've gone to these smaller boxes and again how many times think about this guys you all we all carry around these big boxes of tackle and how many times do we literally need every option in this big box because these are colors that aren't going to work on that particular lake or that particular time of the year or you just got a lot of extras of certain colors and you're like you know i don't need to carry these around every day of the week in the boat keep them in the truck in tubs or in their deck system and then you know kind of replenish your stock as needed and so that's Kind of my little thing here i've gone to these smaller boxes so that being said i think that's what i'm gonna do get rid of that do that and then put all my other stuff over on this side so oh check this out guys here's something here this is the deck plugs by bob's machine shop they just sent these to me i bet you're wondering what in the heck is a deck plug bob's machine shop deck plugs these are actually milled from aluminum they have a rubber seal they're powder coated so they're really really good see these holes right here 
what happens with these holes is one, some of your plastics will fall in there, like your leftover plastics. They swell up, they plug the hole up where water starts to stand in there and you can't ever get the water out and that's not good. So these deck plugs, you just basically put them on right there. Done, done, and it's better to stand on. So that looks nice. So those are the Bob's Machine Shop deck plugs. And then of course, if you wanna put your seat in, just pop them out, pop them right back out. So it's a pretty simple deal. Now, the front of this boat, come up here on the front. The front of this boat, a little different, right? A little different. This is the Garmin Force trolling motor. Now you guys have you know, seen me run Minn Kota forever. And uh, I was apprehensive about running a new trolling motor this year, just because you know, with new technology, you don't know. But I did, I tested this thing out for about six months before actually, you know, they were kind of released. No issues at all. They've been very upfront with me. There just hasn't been any major issues. They've just been a very, very, very good, dependable trolling motor. So I have put it on and, and we're ready to go. Cannot wait to fish uh, the next tournament with it. So what is cool about this trolling motor and what they kept saying was A, because it's a brushless motor, that you're gonna get more power, right? And you're gonna get longer use. Like, it lasts longer because the brushless motor does not absorb all that power. It doesn't eat your batteries up. So guys, they talk about this being 30% stronger and 30% more efficiency, and it, it is, okay? It is, honestly. Look, I've been on Okeechobee and I've put it on full blast. It looks like rapids behind my boat going. I mean, I've never gone this fast with a trolling motor. I mean, I'm hauling butt through this grass right now. Number two, when I've gone through the grass, this is the notable, noticeable difference for me, was in the thick grass, when I had my other trolling motor on there, the Minn Kota, you know, it would go through it, but you kind of, you know, the boat would kind of slow down, the grass would start grabbing the boat. And I went through some super thick stuff. Matter of fact, when I caught that, I don't know if you saw the biggest fish that I caught on that swim bait yet, almost a 10 pounder. If you looked around in that video, that was super, super thick grass. And it went through there like, you can't believe it. Crash right through this thick stuff. Look at this thing. I mean, I'm hauling butt through here, dude. Okay, so Garmin Force, it's the real deal. Uh, super excited about having it on here. And I've, of course, got the boat logic mounts here on the front as well. And here's what I love about this on the front. I actually stand right in this little area, believe it or not, which is, not, I'm not suggesting that. You're liable to break your unit, but this bracket does not move, okay? I've stood on this and stood on the trolling motor when I'm sight fishing. Good stuff. So, guys, that is the front of my boat, and uh, it's ready to go. All right, guys, that is it. One thing that is not on this boat yet that it will be on the boat very, very soon is my brand new Siren Marine. That is my boat monitoring software and system that keeps track of the boat. It is basically an alarm system for the boat. It keeps track of if my boat leaves, gets stolen, somebody's messing around on my boat, I can even monitor all the stuff in my boat. And it even saved me on my insurance. So if you get Siren Marine, be sure to tell your insurance company that you have a GPS on your boat. So if someone steals your boat, you can go get your boat. So that being said, guys, thank y'all so much for all the support. We're 500,000 strong now. Love y'all. And y'all stay safe, my friends. Bam!